Hi, I'm Wade from Thoroughbred Diesel. We've got the whiteboard back out today because we're going to talk to you just a little bit about what you can do to help your fuel economy. It's 2022, um, March of 2022 specifically, and what is the one thing that we're all talking about right now? And it's rising fuel prices, rising gas and rising diesel prices. So with that end, we need to figure out a way to be able to not spend as much money at the pump. And that's what we want to talk to you about today. We have all of the tools inside of the, inside the performance realm to be able to help combat this. And I want to make sure that I talk about some of the other uh, main things that really are kind of a reality check for uh, you vehicle owners to be able to help you to say, hey, is this worth what it's costing me? money-wise um, in the overall efficiency of my vehicle. And I'm going to underline that because that's the theory of what I want to talk about today. Efficiency is what we're looking for. Efficiency is going to equal fuel economy. Okay, if we make our vehicles more efficient, we're going to get better fuel economy uh, naturally with that. So three different points we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about general maintenance of your vehicle. We're going to talk about tuning and we're going to talk about performance and upgraded hard parts and all of these things, these three things to be able to help you with your efficiency of your vehicle to get you better fuel economy. All right, let's talk about maintenance first and let's talk about a couple of different subsets of the maintenance. Let's talk about stuff that you can do for free and stuff that's going to co this stuff that's going to cost. Free. All right, what can we do for free to help with overall fuel economy of your vehicle? The first thing I'm gonna tell you, and this is, gets beat like a dead horse, and it should because it's one of the most important parts of it, tire pressure. You've got tires on your truck, if you've got a low tire that you've been fighting for months and you've been putting off getting it taken care of, get it taken care of because I promise you it's costing you money. Every time you have to fill your tire up, you've already let it get to a threshold or an air pressure that's that's got more drag on it and that's costing you money. Fix the tires, put new tires on your truck, whatever you have to do, get it right. Look at the air pressure inside your doors. If you're running on stock size or stock configuration tires, look at the air pressures that are recommended inside the doors. The OE manufacturer of the vehicle already knows that that is the, the proper uh, air pressure for the loading of the vehicle and use that as your guideline as to try to get the truck in the most efficient point that we can for the tires. So tire pressure is a big thing weight that's in the truck. If you guys are running around with a cord of firewood in your bed or you've got your slide in camper in and you don't want to take it out because you just don't want to do it, um, whatever that is, take it out. Shed the daggone extra poundage. The pounds in the truck are going to add to, is going to add to dragging down your efficiency of the vehicle. So go through your truck. Look, man, what can I throw out of here? If I've got a toolbox in it, I got a bunch of tools. I'm not using them on my commute. Take them out, lighten the truck up, wash the damn truck. If you're like me, you've probably got an extra 100 pounds of mud hanging out underneath the truck. Take it, run it through a car wash, blast off everything underneath of the truck, lighten it up. You'd be surprised at how much weight that you'll, you'll shed off of a truck when you just do that one thing, just washing the vehicle. Go through the back of your cab. Most of you guys like me, we've all got crew cab trucks or extended cab trucks. You've probably got crap in the back seat from hunting seasons that are already gone, da, 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 da. Several hundred pounds if you really just try just trying to lighten up the vehicle and just, uh, you know, just lightening everything up. You know, now that's the free, that's really the best free stuff that we can talk about. Looking at wind drag on it too. I mean, I know that this kind of starts chipping away at it, but little adjustments that you make go a long way for months and years at a time if you cut back on, you know. Um, I just general wind drag of the truck. You know, we talk about the efficiencies that has been documented by adding a, a, a bed cover to the truck uh, because of the way that the air draft over the truck, you know, so those are some of the things. That's not a free thing, but just trying to figure out if you've got a big whatever hanging off the damn side of the truck, catching air on it, get rid of it. All right, so now here's the, more of the stuff that's gonna cost us in one way or the other. The first thing that I had wrote down here is one thing that you can do that's actually kind of cheap and easy, uh, it just takes you time uh, and costs a little bit of money, is taking your vehicle and getting it aligned. You would be surprised how much an alignment will help a vehicle, especially if you wind up changing out anything on your steering components or when you get new tires or whatever that is, try to work in. If you have to, if you 
thinking about this, you're like, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and get some tires on the truck, um, get some tires on the vehicle, try to get you know one of these tire places that offers free lifetime alignments or, or whatever that is. So aligning the vehicle is gonna cut the drag down on the, on the vehicle and that's gonna save you money. That's gonna save you fuel and gonna save you money suspension and steering components that you've got that are wore out. If you've got tie rods that have wore out, you've got ball joints that are wore out. Number one, you're not going to be able to get it properly aligned. And number two, it's going to cost you money because it's going to cost you tires getting eat up. It's going to have parasitic drag on the vehicle. That's going to cost you fuel economy. So take care of those steering components. Um, you know, and, and that also keeps you from having maintenance items down the road. If you've got a vibration at the truck at 55 miles an hour, there's a pretty damn good chance that you've got a U-joint going out of the truck. Drop the drive shaft out, check all your U-joints, see where that is. That's a drag point um, on the truck too. And it's also eating up components that are gonna cost you money uh, down the line. Um, you know, um, one of the big things as well as far as a, as a maintenance uh, item goes is just general maintenance for the truck as well. Changing all your filters. Make sure that you keep your fuel filters changed. That's going to lead to, to uh, a big time efficiencies in the vehicle. The fuel system is going to uh, not have to work as hard to produce the uh, commanded pressures on the high side of it. And that's going to help you get better efficiency. It's going to help you get better fuel economy. Oil changes stay current on your oil change. That, that leads to better efficiency of the vehicle. Make sure that you look at your vehicle and look at the overall operating system. Make sure that there's not a air filter or a filter at all that you don't think about. A lot of guys don't think about their positive crankcase ventilation filters. Those have a service interval on them. You want to make sure that you keep those changed because when you have those positive crankcase gases that start backing up into the um, into the engine, that's going to rob you of efficiency, not to mention there's mechanical things that can come of that. You're adding that, that oily mess back into the EGR system and the DPF, so you're just getting that sticky just mess inside the motor. So keep your PCV uh, filters changed. Uh, another thing a lot of people don't think about is inside of the cab and the cabin air filter. The cabin air filter, it, when you keep it changed, that's going to help you with the overall efficiency of the vehicle because of the AC system. The AC system isn't have, isn't working its working its butt off. It costs you a little bit of money, but it's going to save you money all, down the road. Um, I want to go back to free for just one second before we talk about tuning, and I'm going to kind of talk about this in tuning. Your driving style plays probably the biggest part to do with your fuel economy. And a lot of people don't talk about that, whether it be the manufacturer or just me standing here talking to you. A lot of people just don't make mention of that. But your right foot has a lot to do with how your fuel economy is going to be. If you run around and you drive like it's the Indy 500 every day, day after day, if you do that Monday through Friday, do this. If you just can't if you can't bear to not drive a fence, uh, we talk about this all the time, offense and defense. If you drive on offense all the time instead of on defense, do this for me. Drive on offense Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and drive on defense on Tuesday and Thursday, and take that money put it in your pocket because you're going to save on fuel economy that way too. That has a lot to do with it. Your right foot directly translates into your fuel economy. So, yeah, uh, a lot to do with that. That's a free thing. Just don't drive like an idiot. Let's talk about tuning. Um, tuning in today's day and age with vehicles is kind of a, it's, it's something that we have evolved inside of. The tuning companies have, involved, as, have evolved in um, being able to work inside of these complex operating systems that we have inside of the newer vehicles. Very, very complex operating systems. And these, these companies are doing uh, a great job in being able to balance all that out and looking at all of the different tables and taking in your EGR, your DPF system, uh, you know, and this is just very, very general terms. They're looking at hundreds of tables inside of these, if not thousands, uh, to be able to create a tune for you that gives you overall very, very good efficiency. Um, you know, I conversations that I have in general when people are just talking to me, um, the biggest misconception that, that, that a lot of our customers have is when you raise the horsepower of a truck, you automatically are going to be dumping more fuel into the truck or adding more fuel to it, especially with the diesel owners, that's, that's what the thought is, and that costs you money. Well, 
there's a certain threshold of that that your right foot um, has a lot to do with as well. But these tunes are written and these inline modules are designed to work with the operating systems of the truck to be able to raise the efficiency, again, efficiency of the vehicle. So when you're raising the efficiency of the vehicle, you're thereby producing more horsepower to a certain threshold. Uh, and then that hopefully is translating to fuel economy on your truck. Tuning and tuning's ability to do what it's supposed to do for you and what the manufacturers have, what the manufacturers design it to do directly correlates back to number one, maintenance. Tuning can't do what it's supposed to do if you aren't taking care of your truck. If you're riding around in a shit box and you haven't changed the oil in it in two years and you haven't changed the fuel filter because you can't even, you know, you, you don't even know where the fuel filter is, this can't do its job because of this. That's a known fact. So you have to take care of your vehicle to, for tuning to be able to do what it's supposed to do. Now, one point that I want to make on tuning um, is if you're considering tuning and you're getting ready to go down that road, I would suggest for you to consider a tuning device that has a monitoring device with it. And if you don't want to go that route, if you're going to go with an inline module that doesn't have a tuner with it, I would consider uh, investing in a monitoring system for your vehicle. And I'll talk about that just a little bit. Monitoring systems are gonna give you the ability to start, number one, learning about all of the systems inside of your truck. They're gonna be, they're gonna give you the ability to learn about the systems in your truck. A lot of these monitoring systems have, um, a, uh, so like Bully Dog has a, uh, a, a, a driving coach or a mileage coach. Um, most of the monitoring systems will tell you what your real time miles per gallon is, um, miles per gallon are on the vehicle. So you, as you learn that and you're, uh, you're learning that that's going to help you to adjust your driving style, which is a free adjustment that you can make to be able to get um, the best efficiency and the best of fuel economy out of the truck. So having a monitoring system in whatever tuning that you choose is just wildly important to be able to get you to a point to where you're able to make the truck more efficient and get better fuel economy and save yourself some money. Um, so, and a, a big thing there is, and that goes back into researching your tuning options. Look for um, tuning options that have uh, very good feedback from guys inside of your platform. Um, you know, and this is a known thing, this, and this isn't a, a takeaway from any of the tuning manufacturers. There are certain tuning companies that are really centered around one platform. You know, certain companies may tune best on uh, Chevrolets and other companies tune best on Dodges. So do your research and kind of go with what you feel comfortable with and the companies that are able to present the attributes of their tuner to you to make you feel comfortable about the choice that you're going to make. Because again, if you're looking at tuning as it applies to getting better fuel economy, it's going to go a long, long way for you to be able to research that and see guys that have the same setup that you've got and what that does and if they get you better fuel economy. I'm going to say something about this too and this relates back to what I was saying, tuning can't do its job without a properly maintained vehicle. You're not gonna get five more miles to the gallon by slapping on a tuner that's got a 15 inch lift and 75 inch tires on it. Not gonna happen, promise you it's not gonna happen. Understand what you're driving too. You know, if you've got a show truck, it's got a lift on it, all the things, that's going to be something. If you have the ability to do it, you're going to need to park that in your driveway. You're going to have to start driving your wife's car, um, you know, to try to get you to try to save you a little bit of money. And, you know, and I'm talking about all this and I, and, and I don't mean to drag this off. There's a lot of you guys that have got run around with the middle finger in there. You don't care about the fuel prices and, and God bless you, honestly, truly. I, if that's where you are and that's your position, you probably aren't even watching this video anyway, but I get that too. I, I just want to make sure that I'm helping you all that are concerned about it, that are trying to add uh, money back to your to into your pocket. So the third thing that you can do is considering performance and upgraded hard parts. Okay, now there's a, there's quite a bit inside of this. I'm going to talk through it, and the first thing that I really want to talk about is airflow inside of these engines. Not only in gasoline, not only in diesel's engines, but that you gasoline guys can kind of take some notes on this too. 
Looking at the airflow efficiency of the engine, be it on the exhaust side or be it on the intake side, is definitely something that you need to consider when you're looking at overall efficiency of the vehicle. That's going to lead you back to fuel economy. So I'm going to give a really, really good example inside of diesel vehicles today, which is intercooler piping. We know of several examples inside of, uh, of our, uh, of, uh, in today's diesel trucks that we have restrictive or restrictions in the intercooler piping um, that, be, that, is, that is placed there by the manufacturer, OE manufacturer because of clearances um, and things of that nature. A lot of these manufacturers have come out now with upgraded intercooler pipes that get around that. that they put the, the sizing in there, they take the transitions out of it that create restrictions inside of the airflow so it's going to, it's going to take that, that cool air out of the intercooler, get it in the engine um, faster at, 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 at more flow, so it's just going to make the entire system more efficient. So removing those restrictions from the system, just look at your platform. Let's just say, hey, I've got a 2013 blah, 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 blah. Uh, is there any real airflow restrictions? There's a wealth of information out there. You know, we know of, of um, you know, a re so a really, really good uh, example of that in talking about it on the exhaust side not talking about what you guys think I'm talking about, just talking about on exhaust size. Let's talk about the inefficiencies in exhaust manifolds. So um, Duramaxes for years had that concave inside of the driver's side manifold to uh, to clear what OE thought was the steering shaft or it was, was a necessary clearance from the steering shaft. Manufacturers jumped out there and recast those with normal sizing, uh, increased the flow out of that side of the, size of the engine, and it was a really big upgrade for the trucks. It's still a, a relative upgrade um, to this day, if it's if it if it goes into the platforms that have it, so that's one of the that's one of the big things. Uh, one of the big things there, uh, we have identified certain mouthpieces on certain turbos that are restrictive. Uh, manufacturers have done a really really good job of increasing that and transitioning those to where they flow air correctly uh, into the face of the turbo. So just think about your platform, see what upgrades are out there uh, for you inside of that. Now I'm going to talk to you about. Um, uh, just considering maybe an upgraded injector or downsizing the injectors that you've got inside your truck right now. So if you're running around, you know, let's just let's take an example. Well, let's talk about downsizing injectors. So if you if you really just don't think that your truck is as efficient as it needs to be, if you have grown and educated yourself into what makes the truck run the best, keep EGTs in check and things like that, and you know, you're just not there. I've got two big injectors, or not, you know, I've got too big a turbo on the truck. I I, I haven't done very good research about that. Every minute that it goes by, you driving with those systems inside your truck are costing your money. So do your research on turbos and getting turbos size correctly for the vehicle that you're in. Um, talking to injectors, when you're upgrading injectors, there are several manufacturers out here that actually are doing performance injector, injectors and they, uh, and they uh, market them as an economy injector. They're going to get you better fuel economy. So they're designed to have better atomization inside the cylinders to actually save you fuel. Um, you know, and there'll be a performance upgrade for you as well. You're going to get, a, you know, whatever the horsepower number is that that manufacturer says. Let's say it's a 50 horsepower upgrade they claim, uh, and with, uh, but they market it as an economy injector, and they have the statistics and the data to back that up. There's what we've done to the injector to increase the atomization, just to increase the overall efficiency of the injector. This is going to translate to fuel economy for you. So that's studying that you have to do. You guys that are running around with the middle finger in the air, about fuel economy, you don't give a rip, you don't care, you don't care how much fuel costs, you don't care if it goes to $10, you're still going to keep banging the drum. God bless you. We're on your team too, whatever you need from us. However, you all that are conscious of it and are looking for it, don't be afraid to pull those injectors out of the truck, spend the extra, the extra money to get a better quality injector or an upgrade, you know, an upgrade injector and smaller injector. Call us and talk to us about turbo sizing. What are you doing? I think I can make up some fuel economy here. The truck is doing this. We can talk you through that. Okay. So we talked about turbos. We talked about considering performance injector or looking for an economy injector for your truck. Um, overall efficiency of the truck, and we kind of touched on it inside of maintenance, is, is, is making sure that your fuel system is not working any harder than it has to. That's going to translate to the truck struggling and, and, and robbing you of, of efficiency. If you have a truck that has a lift pump, consider upgrading your lift pump or consider just replacing your lift pump. Um, 
you know, that's one thing that goes on a lot of, you know, the Chevrolets for a lot of years didn't have a lift pump. Uh, adding a lift pump to those trucks increases their efficiency. We've, sh we've seen that that, that translates to better fuel economy of the truck. Um, you know, that's a really, really big thing. So if you've just got a stock lift pump and it's got 100,000 miles on it, consider upgrading that. Upgrading that, you know, uh, is going gonna, is gonna to raise your efficiency on the vehicle. So that's a big thing to, to, differ, to, uh, to help you with is upgrading the low side of your high so injection system. We talk about low side, high side. Upgrading your low side lift pumps and things of that nature uh, are going to make your high side more efficient and giving you, you know, better efficiency. All right. Um, you know, gearing is one thing. If you've got a gearing inside of your truck, depending on your tire size, that you need to go uh, uh, whatever it is. You know, maybe put a taller gear inside of there and try to cut everything down there and try to get your RPMs down. Um, you know, that's going to, you know, maybe making that change inside the truck is going to get you a, a big jump inside of, uh, inside of your efficiency, inside of your fuel economy of the truck. So that's, a, that's, a, that's another uh, really, really big thing. Um, EGR and DPF replacement. Talk about this just a little bit. If you haven't done anything on your truck as far as the EGR goes, and the truck's got you know X amount of miles on it, especially if you do a lot of in-town driving and whatnot, your EGR and your DPF, the efficiency of those two components could be going down. Uh, we upgrade. We find we uh, we offer brand new EGRs on the truck. So take a weekend, change your EGR out, put a new EGR on. You're going to increase the flow. You're going to help the overall emission system to be able to perform and do the things that it's able to, it's supposed to be able to do. Um, one thing that's popping up around the country right now, and it has been for probably the last five to ten years, um, is a lot of, of our fuel shops out there have, have um uh, have invested in DPF cleaning stations. And if they offer service for light duty vehicles, they offer service for light duty vehicles, contact them, tell them what you've got, tell them what you're thinking. You said, hey, you know, I'm seeing a lot more regen out of the truck. I've been monitoring this. I'm seeing a higher soot level than what I'm comfortable with. I think that the, I'm coming to the end of the DPF's lifespan. Um, you know, what can you do for me? And they'll explain to you what they can do inside of their service to be able to help you for those things. Uh, so that's definitely a very, very real thing right now because once those systems, EGR and the DPF system, even the, you know, uh, the crankcase filter uh, filtration system, all of that working together, and once that gets plugged up or the filters get to get plugged, the, or um, they start losing their efficiency, that is going to absolutely rob you of fuel economy. Absolutely going to rob you of fuel economy. Uh, so it's just a major, major thing. Inside of that, if you are one of these guys that has, uh, you know, a, a, a later model truck and you've got all of your, uh, your emission systems, um, you just haven't, you know, done any service on them, it might be good to just get out and do a little bit of interstate driving, build up some heat inside those systems, help those systems clean themselves out. They have to be able to do that. You have to get a lot of air moving through them and let them build up a little bit of heat to be able to service themselves. And I find that if you'll do that on trucks, you just get out on the interstate every once in a while and just run, you know, uh, from exit to exit to be able to help that, it's going to go a long way in increasing the life of the DPF and the EGR system. So you're just trying to get your, trying to get the soot levels um, yeah, under control inside of those. So, um, you know, we talked about turbo sizing getting corrected. Um, you know, just correct overall setup on the truck, and, and that helps you go into performance and upgrade of hard parts. You know, um, maybe you went down, you started your walk on your performance modifications that you did to your truck with X goal in mind, and it was high horsepower. Well, now that's adjusted. You're a family man. You've got yourself a family now. Now you're looking at trying to um, you know, increase the efficiency of the truck. Hey, you guys have got 10 inch lifts on these trucks and, and all this crap. It's, it's not too late. You pull that stuff off, <laughs> you know, get it back down and get it to where it's a daily driver for you and, and increase efficiency. And then it can still be fun in that, that mode right there. All right. So in conclusion, there's a lot here and we've given you a lot of different information in is in a, in a very generalized term. So let's, uh, let's tie it all together. So what we're saying here is these th three things are the, the three things that we think are going to go the greatest length in getting you overall better fuel economy in your vehicle. If you keep the mindset of my goal here, my end goal is to increase my fuel economy, but my sub goal to that 
is to increase the efficiency of the vehicle to try to get me to the main goal of better fuel economy. Now, these three things are going to be the, um, are, are, are all going to work together. So we're talking about, so performance upgrade and upgraded hard parts. This is really just, I'm gonna summarize this as, we're looking for a better mousetrap here. We're looking for best setup for the truck, getting everything corrected, most efficient setup, and the truck set up the way it's supposed to be. And then taking that down as your platform that you have and looking at any inefficiencies that the platform has, where can I capitalize on that? Was this a, uh, an inefficient injector? Was it an inefficient turbo system? Are there restrictions in my airflow system? All of those things, study your platform and know what you need to attack to change out the hard parts and get you better performance in that. This lends itself into tuning. Once you have done that and you have fixed all of those inefficiencies or upgraded those those uh, parts of your vehicle, the tuning is going to work in conjunction with that much, much better. You're gonna capitalize on your tuning that you so choose for your vehicle if you have all of the inefficiencies of the hard parts of the vehicle taken care of. And then the maintenance of the truck, this gives these other two factors, your tuning and your hard parts, the chance to do their job. You have to stay up on your maintenance of your vehicle to be able to capitalize on these two things because these two are an investment, okay? Maintenance is an investment, but uh, you know, maintenance is an investment and over the life of the vehicle, it's, it's, it is a costly investment but this is something that you have to do to be able to make, make your money make money. You have to be able to keep up on your maintenance, be able to get your tuning to work the way it is, and the tuning can work a lot more efficiently if you have all of the inefficient uh, hard parts upgraded and needed to be done to the truck what it is. Whew. Okay, so a lot here. Again, if you have any questions about this or you want to talk about your truck setup or what can be done to try to help you with this to get you to the, better, the goal of better fuel economy, give us a call at Thoroughbred Diesel. Thank you for watching.